Well, it's Money Monday, and many of you have sent in email questions regarding your finances, and we'd like to answer those. Pat, this first one is from George, who says, right. Pat, I hear people talking about, quote, futures investments, but I don't know what those are. Could you explain the futures, and do you think those investments are good to consider for one's portfolio? Uh, well, George, uh, a futures contract isn't really something you should put in your portfolio. Uh, if you are a farmer and you have a crop of corn coming up, you will sell that corn into the market at today's prices for delivery in September when you harvest it. So you guarantee a floor for your crop if you feel the price may go down. Same thing is true with oil, gold, commodities of all sorts. They're so-called futures. You're selling into the future, but that's safe because you've got the corn or the gold or what have you. Now, a futures contract, anybody can go out and say, well, I want to buy uh, 50 contracts uh, on uh, uh, September gold uh, at uh, uh, whatever. I mean, the, the, the price would probably be, be, at this point, it's going over $900. I don't know what the particular contract would be, but it'd be, maybe it's $935 an ounce or something. And uh, so assuming during this period of time that gold goes up in value, uh, then you collect. But there's a huge amount of leverage involved. You only have to put up 5%. So if it goes the other way, um, all of a sudden, they want to take your house and your Whoa. wife and children and everything yeah. else away from Depending you. Depending on how you feel about your family. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but I, I mean, if it goes down, and it, it, I mean, the leverage is huge, and you can just make a lot of money uh, on futures, but you really have to know what you're doing. And essentially, it's a bet. It's so you a, could make a lot, but you could also use, oh, lose absolutely. a lot. Oh, uh, absolutely. I've, I've done myself fairly well with futures. Um, but uh, in any event, I'd like to think I know something about it, but uh, not much. And there's some people who spend their lives on this, yeah. and they, they know how to hedge, and they go long, and they go short, and they have all these contracts. But in any event, uh, it, it is not what you put in a, quote, portfolio. All right. He says he doesn't know much, George. Run. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> this is Craig who says, I've heard that we may start seeing hyperinflation here in the United States, but I don't really know what that means. What is hyperinflation and how do I prepare for it? Well, Craig, there are a number of definitions. I think one is that it's, uh, inflation is running about 50% every month, uh, or maybe 100% a year continuous. That's hyperinflation. But it doesn't take that kind of inflation to ruin your, your currency. Uh, if it was just uh, 8 or 9 or 10 percent annually, it would destroy the currency in just a few years. So uh, the value after seven or eight years would be like zero. So inflation is a terrible thing, but it looks like our money people want to have a modest inflation at 2 or 3 percent. But I think they're going to go way overshoot the mark. And when it happens, the dollar is going to go down dramatically in value. and certain commodities like gold and oil and others are going to go up in value because it's just not in value, but in terms of the dollars that it costs to get an ounce of them or a barrel of them or what have you. So if they're priced in dollars, the dollar price will, will go up dramatically. The value of the dollar won't be any difference, but it, it'll be less than it was. So those are things you should invest in when he says, what can we do to prepare for it? Well, I, that's what I think. I think if you're looking for hyperinflation, you need to get with things that are going to uh, go up in dollar terms. And, and they, I just mentioned a couple of them that would go up with hyperinflation. Okay, this is Paul who says, is it the responsibility of the new administration to try to steer the economy or is it an independent <laughs> force that we can only slow down but can't control? Well, you know, there was a British economist who thought we could uh, steer the economy a great deal and uh, that was John Maynard Keynes. And, they talk about being Keynesian, uh, but uh, I think the government has a responsibility to maintain level currencies and also with the use of fiscal policy, they can increase spending and, and ease through some of the rough places. But what they're talking about now is essentially crazy and it's going to lead to terrible inflation in about a year or two. Greg says, Pat, what do you think the first thing the new U.S. administration should do to have the biggest impact on the economy? Um, 
the first thing they should do is to lower the corporate income tax immediately and make it permanent. Uh, they should lower particularly um, the taxes on payrolls. Uh, and that would that could come through in about two weeks. People mm -hmm. would suddenly start getting more money. That's what you were talking about earlier yeah, with the FICA. So and the FICA and all that stuff. Uh, that hits the average worker worse than anything else. And if they eased off on that, there would be an immediate flood of money into the economy, and people would be able to spend it and know what to do with it, and they could count on it. What's, the worst thing is just to pass out a $100 check or $500 check. People, I mean, wh what does it mean? They're not going to put that into their future planning because it's not going to be there. Yeah. Okay, this is Rachel who says, Pat, when we hit the bottom on the market, what might that bottom look like? Or do you think we've hit it already? <laughs> yeah. uh, you said that J.P. Morgan was asked uh, what the stock market was going to do, and he said, but it'll fluctuate. And I think <laughs> that's the smartest thing. Uh, where would the bottom be? Would it be when um, the P.E. of the market is, is six? or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten? Would that be the, the, the bottom? Or would it be some historic figure? Um, right now, they, they, they're just guessing. They don't know. But it has to do with the function of the, of the underlying health of the economy. If indeed the corporate world and the major companies on the stock market uh, are pretty sound in their finances, there'll be a point where you just say you're selling them at a ridiculous figure. And at that point, it's time to buy them. I thought we'd hit there already. And we're, we're certainly very close to a bottom uh, under those terms. But if on the other hand, you think, well, in a year or two, all these businesses are going to go into the dumper, then your calculations don't work. So yeah. it depends on the underlying uh, strength of the economy, ultimately. And uh, it seems like the economy is not near as weak as people think it is. Well, that's all the time we have for Thank today's you. email questions, but we welcome your questions here. And every Monday, we try to help you take an in-depth look at your finances. So let us know what you'd like Pat to answer. Well, I am an optimist, and I think God's going to bring us through this stuff, and it's going to be okay. But it's, there'll be some pain along the way.